In this video, I'll show you how to use radio communication to send signals and information between two or more microbits. As you may have noticed here, I'm using the buttons on this microbit to control the screen on this microbit and vice versa. In this video, I'll show you how. If you need to learn how to set up your microbit for the first time, check out the first video in this tutorial series linked in the video description. Remember that to do this, you'll need at least two microbits. We'll start by setting up the first microbit as the transmitter that sends a message. Go to input and drag out an on button A pressed block. Then go to the radio menu, which we haven't used yet, and drag out a radio send number block. This will cause the microbit to send a number via its radio when we press button A. I'm going to duplicate this set of blocks and then change the options so I send a different number when I press button B. For example, I'm going to have it send a one instead of a zero. And that's all there is to it for my basic transmitter microbit. Go ahead and download this program to your first microbit, then plug in your second microbit and start a new program. For your second microbit, we'd like to program this one to be the receiver. So go back to the radio menu and drag out an on radio received received number event block. This block will run when the radio on the receiving microbit receives any number, but we know from how we programmed our transmitting microbit that we're only going to send a zero or a one. And let's say I'd like to take different actions depending on which number I receive like as we've done in many of our other videos showing a frowny face or a smiley face. I'm going to do that with an if else statement, again, as we have done in many other videos. I'm going to snap that inside my on radio received block. I'm going to go back to the logic menu and get a comparison operator. And I'm going to compare this received number value, which I can get a copy of simply by clicking on and dragging it down here. I don't need to duplicate it. And I'm going to check if that is equal to zero, which I know from how I programmed my other micro bit means that I must have pushed button A. So if I push button A, I'm going to show a smiley face. But again, you could choose any icon you want or draw your own pattern on the LEDs, or make your microbit play a sound with something from the music menu. I am just going to choose our usual smiley face and frowny face. Now, in this case, since I know that I'm only sending a zero or one because I only set my transmitting microbit to broadcast one of two things, then I don't need to add more conditions to my if else statement, because if I know that the receive number isn't a zero, then it has to be a one, that's my only other option. So I'm just going to snap another show icon block into the else part of my statement, turn that into a frowny face, and now download this program to my receiving micro bit. Now, here is my transmitter and here is my receiver. And we see that when I press button A on the transmitter, the receiver shows a smiley face, and when I press button B on the transmitter, the receiver shows a frowny face. However, this is just one-way communication from one microbit to the other. But each microbit is capable of both transmitting and receiving messages, so let's modify our program to do that. We can take our receiver program and simply add back in what we had in the transmitter program. I'm going to go to input, add an on button A pressed block, then go to radio, and radio said number zero, and snap that inside the button press block. I'm going to duplicate this, change one to B, and send the number one, and then I'm going to add another one for pressing both A and B to send number two. Now, I'm also going to add another condition to my if else statement. So I am going to check if my received number is equal to one, meaning I've pressed button B, and I'm going to show a frowny face. And if not, if it's not zero or one, then I know the received number must be a two, so I'm going to clear the screen if I press both buttons. Now I can download this same program to both micro bits, and they will both have the transmit and receive behavior. 
This works because the microbit doesn't receive its own message when it sends a radio number. It will send to all other microbits that are in range, which will then react accordingly and change the display on their screen, but it won't affect the screen of the microbit that's doing the broadcast. Before you download, you can run this program in the simulator by clicking one of the buttons on the first microbit to bring up a second microbit. You can then click the buttons on either microbit to control the screen of the other one. Downloading this program to both microbits gives the behavior you saw at the beginning of the video, where pressing the buttons on one microbit controls the screen on the other microbit. What if you have more than two microbits? By default, any microbit that sends a number will be heard by any other microbit that is listening with this on radio received block. And that could be fine, but maybe you're working in small groups in a classroom, or you want to send secret messages between just two microbits without other microbits being able to intercept them. And you can do that with the radio set group block. So if you drag this out, and snap it into your on start block because it only needs to run once. The default value is one. So every microbit starts out on radio group one and it will send and listen for messages to all the other microbits that are on radio group one. But if I click and change this to group two, you can actually change it from anything between zero up to 255. But if I change a microbit to group two, then it will only send messages and listen for messages from other microbits that are on group two. So if you are next to another group of people who are set to radio group one and you are set to radio group two, then your microbits will not interfere with each other. Just to demonstrate that, here we have the same two microbits running the same code, except now the one on the left has been set to radio group one and the one on the right has been set to radio group two. So now, Pushing the buttons doesn't do anything because the microbits are on different radio groups and aren't communicating with each other. There are many other things you can do with radio communication. For example, you can use the received packet signal strength block to approximate the distance between two microbits since the signal gets weaker as they get farther apart. You can also send sensor information, and again, we've covered many of these sensors in previous videos in this tutorial series. This lets you use one microbit as a remote sensor that sends data back to another microbit, which can be connected to a computer and print data via the serial monitor. We won't cover all of those different options in this video, but check out some of the microbit projects on the Science Buddies website for examples. Check out the links in the video description for the rest of our microbit tutorial series and lots of fun science projects you can do with a microbit. For hundreds of other projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out our YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe so you never miss a new project. Thank you for helping us inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers.